Hello everybody and welcome to the Unlocked Podcast, the podcast to help inspire you to live the best version of yourself and live a positive and successful life. Hosted by me, Ricky Locke, professional magician, speaker, trainer and lover of Peri Peri Salted Chips from Nando's. Welcome to the first interview of season two and what a great episode I have in store for you. Fans of the podcast will recognise the two wonderful ladies in this episode as I have pretty much talked about them on every single episode of season one. So I thought it'd be a great way to get them on for a chat to kick off season two. And as we've all pretty much survived the first month of 2021, and while it may have felt a little bit strange and a little bit difficult, I think it is really, really important to make sure that we reflect on 2020 so that we can bounce properly into 2021. And this is exactly what me, Bev and Kate discuss in this great episode. And I truly believe that you're going to find a lot of value in this episode. But... We could not launch season two without something special. So with the release of this brand new season, I'm going to be giving away a delicious hamper filled with tasty treats and tipples to enjoy season two with. And included in this delicious hamper is Bev and Kate's journal for clear thinking. It's the perfect way to capture and reflect your thoughts and ideas to help you achieve clear thinking. You'll be able to hear more about their clear thinking journal in this episode. And because I am a very kind and generous man, I'm also going to give away one more prize, which is my Unlocked Podcast Branded Notebook, which is the perfect way to accompany you to record your thoughts, inspiration and top tips from this season. To be in with a chance to win this wonderful prize, all you have to do is head over to Instagram, follow my channel at RickyLockMagic, like the competition post, tag two of your friends in the comments who would also love this hamper and a bonus entry point if you screenshot listening to this episode and stick it onto your stories. And by the way, the more that you comment and tag, the more chances you have to win the delicious hamper and journals. Now, the competition ends on Tuesday, the 2nd of Feb, and I'll announce the winner on Wednesday, the 3rd of February. But thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I really do hope that you enjoy season two, and this episode is a great way to kick off the brand new season. Without further ado, enjoy this episode. Welcome everybody to the first episode of season two of Unlocked. And today I am joined by the Clear Thinking Partnership. The Clear Thinking Partnership is a collaboration between Kate Miles Roberts and Bev Holden. They've been in business since 2007, but they've been collaborating long before that in their corporate lives. Welcome to the show. How are you both? Really good. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you, Ricky. Lovely to see you. Oh, thank you so much. This has been a long time coming. And for regular podcast listeners, you will know that I've mentioned Bev and Kate a number of times now in the last 13 episodes that we've had. So a lot of pressure on this one, as I just said to Bev and Kate before press and record. But I think everybody's going to find a lot of value from this conversation. However, direction this conversation goes, you will find a lot of value. I absolutely love these ladies. They are fantastic what they do. And I think the world needs to hear more about them. So Really looking forward to this, and I think it's a really great way to kick off 2021. Bev and Kate do know that I was going to get them on for the season finale of season one, but we decided that actually I think it'd be quite relevant to kick off 2021 with a bit of a reflection, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But welcome to the show. Did you have a great Christmas and a good new year? It was it was lovely. They were, we properly turned turned things off, so I slipped my brain into neutral and had a thoroughly nice Christmas and New Year thank you how about you Kate yeah it was great it was a little bit different because we've got three little boys so they were super excited and it was um very busy frenetic messy all good stuff though so uh back to work for a bit more um bit of calm a bit of of a rest as I just said um (laughs) but no it was brilliant thank you very much brilliant well as I said thank you so much for coming on I really wanted to make sure that we do justice with this episode and I think we should start off first by explaining to the listeners, who are you? What is the Clear Thinking Partnership and what do you do? It's very mysterious, Ricky. (laughs) Um, So so I guess we uh, create really safe spaces, safe environments where people can think really well. So Kate coined a phrase last year, which um, we really love, which is we make great thinking inevitable. And so that's going to be uh, one of the first messages on our website because our website's being um, revamped at the moment because I think what we've noticed over the last year is that is absolutely what we do and we do it in lots of different ways but but we create those conditions for people to really think and feel safe in that environment what, what else would you add Kate? 
I think that probably a couple of our hallmarks are that we are really creative people. So we love creating environments that are quirky, different, get people's brains engaged in a little bit of a different way. Um, and also we're super curious about stuff. So we absolutely love meeting new people, working with new teams, working with teams that we've worked with um, forever and a day, just seeing how their experience is evolving and how they're changing as people as well. So I think our curiosity is always at the forefront of everything that we do, um, which allows it to always feel a little bit different. Um, I think you, you mentioned right at the beginning, Bev and I have been in partnership since 2007, which starts to feel like quite a long time ago now, um, yeah. but it's gone in a flash because it's been just brilliantly exciting and different and every year has been I guess has had some threads of similarity but has all of them have been different and I guess particularly last year has been a little bit different for everybody on top of that too. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful thing you've said there and I totally totally support that the environments that you create I would almost call it as an experience I know it's something that we'll talk about later on and one of the themes that are really important to me for season two of this series is that um, I really want to talk about like customer experiences, but we won't talk about that right now, but the experience that you have created, especially in 2020. And even though I met you, I think it was about 2015, 2016, potentially, I'll have to give or take a year or two, but the experience that you create is so powerful. And I know a lot of people will know from my tagline on Instagram and, and everything I'm about my tagline in life and business is to create memories that will last a lifetime. And the session that we did back in, I think it was 2017, that stuck with me for a long time. And it goes to show, I think, last year in a, in a, in a year of trauma, stress, and so many things happening to so many people, what you created was a wonderful experience for people to collaborate, to join in, and just have a chance to breathe <laughs> and just think. I know that people will know this because I talked about one of the experiences I had with Bev uh, on uh, one of my episodes, which was called Life is Tough. And it was this idea of having a space to just think for myself with no predetermined direction and to really walk away with an answer. I think that is so powerful. It's almost like um, you're, you're superheroes. That's what I'll say. Yeah, you have this ability to get people to start thinking about things in a, a pub and pun, but in a clear thinking way. Um, so, yeah, so I'm absolutely honoured and privileged to have you on. I think it's just a wonderful thing that you both do. Um, I think I will talk about actually when we first met because we met in Milton Keynes when I used to work in Argos. It was, um, I can't remember what the training session was called now. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but um, it was really, really fun. It was to kind of help us to think about how could we tackle a training session in a new way when it was all about change. And I still remember, and it's not behind me, it's up on the shelf here, but looking at books like Sumo and stuff like that. So I think that was the first time I was introduced to Paul McGee from, uh, I think Kate might've been your book, I'm not too sure. But that was such a powerful session, the three or four days we had together that I have remembered that long after it's finished. And that is a testament to what you both do. So yeah, thank you for such a wonderful experience. But I think uh, more recently, how we kind of got to know each other was last year. So 2020, I was kindly invited uh, by Bev and Kate and Matt to the um, breathing space to talk about my um, my terrible story of how I turned up late at a wedding four hours late and nearly shitting myself, which was very, very embarrassing. Um, but it was the need to inspire people. So um, I and, and from that moment, that just kind of rocketed my 2020. I think it's almost a year since that happened. But as we all know, 2020 was not a great year. It was a terrible year for some people, but there was also some wonderful things that came out of that. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about that, which brings me on to the discussion that I wanted to get you both on for, which was about looking back at 2020 to move forward. And I think we've discussed it before this, where in the last couple of days, we have seen posts on Facebook, posts on Twitter and LinkedIn about death to 2020 the diary is going into the bin but I walked away from 2020 feeling really grateful um, and feeling this abundance of love and I think that again you two have kind of um, was the spark to that going back into April but I think that we should really think about that reflection so my question to you both would be how can we use our thinking to reflect on 2020 to move forward in 2021? Mm -hmm. It's a great question as well, Ricky, and you're right, because I think lots of people want to consign 2020 to the bin. And 
and hope that 2021 will be better. And just because the earth has turned on its axis, one more rotation, and we've done a, you know, we've done a whole other year. We, we've gone from, from December 31st to the 1st of January, that nothing has changed. Why would it? And it's great that people have a sense of hope for the future, because I think hope is a really important human quality that we need to foster and use. But what a shame if we ignore some of the experiences of last year. So although we couldn't go many places and lots of things got cancelled and endless, endless <laughs> things falling out of our calendars because we could no longer do them. They're not the things that I remember. They're not the things that I reflect on because when I did a big list of all the things that I had experienced in 2020, some of them on my own, some of them together with Kate, some with others, there were some remarkable experiences in there and they're all centred around other human beings Mm. and it was about human interaction. And what is really ironic is that in an era because it feels like an era, because it's that long, (laughs) because in an era where we are supposed to be socially distant, I have never felt more connected to people Mm. than I did in 2020, Mm. which is, is a really significant reflection, actually, because my experiences of people were very different and richer, even though the distance between us was greater. So that that's my kind of initial thought about how we can maybe reframe our experiences of 2020. Totally. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Kate? I totally agree with Bev around the whole relationship piece, because I think that the overriding feeling when, when I was thinking about it, so the last day of last year was around the relationships that have been built, strengthened, started from scratch. So I I met a whole bunch of people last year online that I'd never come across before who I feel really connected to and it's a really odd it's an odd thing isn't it I think instinctively you'd think that you would have to meet somebody in the flesh to know that you had a good secure relationship with them and it's really not the case and I think we were having that reflection with somebody Bev and I and then they kind of piped up yeah but we've never met have we and we were like oh yeah (laughs) we'd almost forgotten that we'd never met them in the flesh because the strength of that relationship had, had, had sort of cultivated and and had become really, really strong and meaningful and powerful. Um, And I think that is a function of some of last year because because it was a a shared experience, kind of adversity creates a condition for everybody to have something to talk to each other about. So we have that shared experience and we have that shared bond of adversity in whichever way it kind of crystallized in, in your kind of, you know, for yourself. But I think what it did do was really push us into caring for each other and having those good conversations that were about people as human beings not just the kind of work relationship that maybe we had that perhaps slightly more superficial relationship you know in the the years gone by Um, and I think that's made a huge difference so just thinking about that quality of relationship um, has been important for me reflecting on last year as well. Yeah, I think it's funny, isn't it? Well, I think we were in a very, very busy world um, before, you know, pre-COVID that it gave us that time to stop, recharge the batteries and actually look up from our phones, you know, and actually talk to people and listen and find out about what people are doing. And there's this funny thing, isn't there? I keep saying this to everybody. I can't wait when events, when they happen in normal again, I really want to see how tall people are or how small they are. Because all I've seen for the last 12 months is people on a Zoom. So you know, are they are they really tall? Are they small? And we were laughing this with uh, Kirsty Mack because Kirsty's really really tall, and I'm I think I'm six foot two. So I'd just be really interested to see what people are like in real life. But um, a point you were mentioning there, Kate, is that whole six degrees or seven degrees of separation. The idea of that you can now connect with someone and just have a conversation with, and there's no boundaries, there's no PA to get through first, or you know, a hierarchy chain to climb. And I definitely feel grateful for that. And I said this to both both Scott and Kirsty, you know, working with them in December was an absolute honour and privilege to going back to April and May, doing the first conversation with you about my my four hours late for the wedding thing. And then having people like Kirsty saying, thank you, that's a wonderful story. To then six months later, picking up a phone to them, you know, picking up the phone and having a conversation with, oh my God, uh, Scott, Scott Leap has called me or, or Bev Holden's called me this is strange, you know, and there is a real pinch me moment, which I think for me, that was the 2020 moment for me is that there's this real, yeah, I I think until I actually sat down over the period of Christmas and New Year, did I realise like, wow, it it was a great year. And I know that a lot of people listening and and both Bev and Kate will know, 
my personal life and my uh, business life was terrible last year. Absolute terrible. Uh, I couldn't get married. We had two deaths, unfortunately, in the family. We, our car got, um, uh, so we got two cars, but uh, Danielle's car got uh, crashed into. So it was a write-off. So we had to go down to one car. And I think that when I say it out loud and you hear that, it really puts things into perspective that I woke up today and... I had no toothache, right? <laughs> that sounds like a really weird thing, but it's a reference to uh, Andy Cope and Andy Whitaker from The Art of Brilliance, is that if you can wake up every day and not have toothache, then you're living a good life, aren't you? And I think until you can sit back and reflect and really take things into perspective, and I, I, I have this running joke with Danielle because in one of my podcasts on season one, I said, a roof over my house. I don't have a roof over my house, but it meant to come out as a roof over my head. When you look around and there is there's light, there is warmth, there is there is food. Yes, I, I lost like 80% of my income. Uh, I lost about, I think, 45 weddings last year that I should have been at. No, no support from the government. And I'm not going to get the violins out. But from that came collaboration, kindness, and just wonderful experiences. And I think that it's really important that people should take that time to, to think about, you know, what were the, the great things in 2020? Because... I was sitting here yesterday writing it down and I just thought, oh my God, yeah, yeah, I did that. And it may not necessarily have been like like a financial achievement because that was terrible last year um, or it might not have been like um, a personal goal, but some wonderful things came out from that. And I think that maybe we've had blinkers on for so long and last year has given us, us that opportunity, isn't it? To take the blinkers mm. off and look around. There are real people and like you said, Kate, we are human beings. We're not human doings, are we? You know, we think and we feel. So therefore, reach out. Let's have a chat. Let's conversation. So my, my thoughts then thinking about this is that if we're going to be moving into 2021 and the time of recording this, uh, unfortunately, there was a, a big announcement last night by the government of us going into another national lockdown. So there's going to be plenty of people that are worrying panicking, fearing, you know, their, their jobs, their businesses, and, and even me in particular, you know, for the wedding industry and events industry, uh, it can be very worrying. So in terms of for both uh, Kate and Bev, I'll go to Kate first, actually, on this one. Kate, if you used to think uh, or to give some tips to people thinking about how to get some clear thinking here for this year, based on what we know about last year, what would you say to people? What would be your recommendation? So I sent um, Bev and Kirsty a text the other day um, with a little picture on it. It was, a, it was a montage picture of my little boy, Michael. And uh, my phrase for them was, be more Michael. So Michael is 18 months old. He is the cheekiest little thing. He always has a sm massive smile on his face, whatever he's doing. Um, and so my, my kind of thought to Bev and, and Kirsty was, be in the moment absolutely maximize living life to the full in that moment that you're in and always have a cheeky smile on your face um yeah. and so there's some of that i think there is some of that really accessing the moment that you're in and enjoying it for what it is we can worry so much about what never happens and i think that over you know the various experiences that i've had of, of my life i really and yeah i have to remind myself about it but i really do enjoy being in the moment and enjoying absolutely what it is that you can notice about that moment in time. So it might be like today, beautiful sunshine in January, or it could just be, you know, loads of people. I think I remember at the beginning of lockdown, everyone suddenly said, notice the birds singing for the first time. And it wasn't because birds had just started singing. It was because we'd slowed down enough and got quiet enough and still enough to notice all of that nature going on around us. So I do, I do think just that sort of in the moment recognition of all those good things. And they might be minute, tiny things, but all those things, I think, add up to allow us to feel resourceful enough to then meet the challenges head on, because we know that there'll be some things that are tougher to, um, to handle. So there would be a little bit of that for me. Love that. What about you, Bev? Um, so I think I would say swim in the opposite direction to the rest of the fish. And that's because <laughs> um, <laughs> this time of year, everybody leaps into action. It's the 1st of January. So the diet starts, the exercise regime starts. I'm writing the book. I'm launching the podcast. I'm doing the online course. I'm doing this, that, and that. You know, so there's a huge Have you um, rules, Bev? <laughs> <laughs> well, but there is a big pull and 
a sense of a requirement to throw ourselves into the start of the year with extreme gusto. And for the first time, I'm going, no, I'm not doing that this year. And part of it is inspired by our experiences last year and also by some conversations I've had with Wendy Asplund. Mm. I think I think you know Wendy, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And it's January and February and half of March are the perfect time to slow down, to rest, to reflect, to think about and uh, or to think about what has happened, but also think about what you would like in the future, because we don't really need to spring into action and start swimming, <laughs> if that's not too many metaphors, yeah. um, until March. Mar- March is the natural time when things come to life, not January and February. So I'm really taking this whole wintering thing really seriously. Yeah. And so I'm trying really hard to resist the temptation to do what everyone else is, is doing and commit to things that are really attractive because I love new and shiny. I love learning things for the sake of learning them because it makes me better able to do the things that I do and to help other people. But but actually I'm going, you know, I know a lot of stuff already, thanks. I actually need to think about the stuff I know and consider how that wisdom reveals itself rather than just layer on more stuff. Yeah. So I'm I'm really I'm really thinking hard about making sure I'm going in the opposite direction. There are a few other fish swimming with me. And, and that's fine. But the, the slowness and stillness that Kate talked about that we all experienced or many of us experienced because it's not all of us because some people have never stopped because of the nature of the work that they do. But I think those of us who had that pause, we've really got to benefit from that and not forget that that slowness that also brings a whole load of ease. Kate and I talk about ease a lot. It's a really big deal in terms of thinking because we can't think clearly if we're hurried, if we're rushed, if we're busy being human doings, not human beings. So we really need to slow down and be still enough to actually find that ease and dial that ease up so that we can do that thinking that that is going to make a difference. One of the quotes I use a lot is the quality of everything we do depends on the quality of the thinking that we do first. And that's a Nancy Klein quote. And the quality of that thinking is defined by how easeful we are in that moment. So if we're hurtling around, swimming with all the other fish, <laughs> um, getting caught up in all of that, then we're going to find it really difficult to do our best thinking. Because I, I yeah. think that that's where, where you were going with that question was about the tips for, for doing some really great thinking. So I think that yeah. pulls it around to that, I think. Definitely. Yeah. It reminds me again of another Andy Cope <laughs> phrase from his book, which was um, I, I often think uh, from his phrase, which I'll share with you, that 2020 last year was like going the opposite direction in Ikea (laughs) you know like (laughs) how crazy that would be on a busy Saturday morning but actually isn't that quite fun as well you know trying to go around maybe not for some people but I think it is a fascinating uh, concept I love the idea with the fish as well Um, there was something Kate that you said there that uh, brought something to my mind which was based on I I literally I think I only heard it about a few days ago Uh, I think I shared this with Bev the other day and it was, um, it's taken from Teddy Roosevelt, so President Roosevelt, and it was, uh, I think Brenny Brown uses it quite a lot. And it is the idea of um, the vulnerability and about that. And I know I've talked about vulnerability, that people often talk about it as a weakness, but actually it's a strength. Brenny says is vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Vulnerability is not weakness. It is our greatest measure of courage. And I truly believe that that's what um, you both did last year. I think it's what I did. And I think a lot of our peers that uh, are in our networking circles also did as well. We didn't just stop. Uh, I mean, I could have if I wanted had a whole year off if I wanted to and do nothing. But we showed up, even though we had no idea. I had literally no idea that I'd ever perform at a wedding again last year. And I think I performed at three. But I thought maybe it could be the end, you know. But what happened? We turned something around and we created this uh, special experience. Uh, for online shows and that that really took off for me and it was that courage wasn't it to just show up through um taking all that failure and adversity and doing something with it I could have easily sat there and you know just said oh it's crap isn't it yeah and I think that's the difference isn't it of why we're seeing so many people now uh saying god can't wait to get rid of 2020 of course yeah it was it wasn't a great year for everyone but w- there were still some things that came up and I think we need to show up more often, I think, and have more mm. courage. Definitely. And, and I think, I don't know, in, 
I like that thought of it being courageous, but actually from our experience, we really, we relished it because it was like, yeah. all bets are off. Let's do something different. Let's have a go. And it, yeah. I think Bev and I earlier, Sean had the conversation you know, like when the worst thing has actually happened, then it doesn't matter what you do next. It's really exciting. And, and I think that that absolutely, if I, if I reflect back on last year, there was definitely that thread of what else? What else could we do that's crazy and different and completely against the norm? Because we don't need to do, we don't need to be normal. This isn't normal. So let's be abnormal in a good way um, and to do something that is creative, could be courageous, just might be totally, totally different to to what we've kind of thought we were all about um which has been exciting and really energizing as well i think totally i, I think i had a slight disappointment i think at the end of 2020 thinking oh no there's probably gonna be no more online shows if we go back to normal <laughs> and isn't that weird that i went back 12 months wishing that oh my god i'm gonna be doing all of these wonderful weddings never doing online shows ugh, you know and now there's a disappointment thinking i oh, waste that change isn't it it's that growth and fixed mindset mm-hmm. i've become comfortable and i've adapted but I think I need to make sure that I don't um, get too comfortable and keep changing and doing stuff to keep that fresh. But yeah, lovely. Thank you for that, Kate. Uh, I was going to say, actually, to the both of you, which is linked really well into what we're talking about. As I said, one of the things that you did really, really well last year was to create an experience. Um, so not many people will know about breathing, spray, uh, breathing space or spring break. Would you share, please, what that was and how did that come around? And then we'll talk mm. about some experiences. So uh, ordinarily in the summer each year, Kate and I have summer school and it's our, we do it in August and we work on the business rather than in the business. So we do all our client work up to July and then start again in September, but we try and keep August for ourselves and, and we treat it like school. So we learn, we have experiences, we do nice things together. It's become increasingly difficult with (laughs) children and holidays, Um, but we've always done that. And so Early on, within the first couple of days of lockdown one, we went, let's just do summer school now and call it spring break. And that was it. And be- because we're part of a community of people who love to learn, we've got this personal learning l- network. And so spring break was born and we'd like to learn from other people. So we selfishly thought, well, what could we do to learn from other people, but invite other people in on the act? And so we had a chat with Matt Edwards and decided that we'd run these mini conferences where within the hour that we're together, we get a friend, a colleague, somebody that we know and have an experience of. But, you know, when you know somebody really well, you don't ask them the obvious questions. You don't really know what their story is, their their, their backstory, why they do what they do. So we thought, well, this would be interesting. Let's just get a bunch of folks we know to come and talk to us. Um, because they do something interesting or different. And and our very first speaker was Lynn Paxman, our favourite snail farmer. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, a snail farmer, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just incredible. And so Lynn came and talked to us about getting jiggy with snails <laughs> 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 or how they get jiggy with each other, to be perfectly fair. Um, and it was a lovely experience because people came and spoke about how they were feeling at the moment um, because everyone was in the same situation as Kate and I, because everyone's work had gone off the cliff. (laughs) And so people going, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my job looks like. I don't know where my clients have gone. And so it provided a space, not, not for us to navel gaze, but actually to be inspired and to remember that actually we've got a love of learning. So let's surround ourselves with those people. And it is interesting when you were talking about vulnerability, because breathing space and spring break morphed into breathing space but spring break there was so much vulnerability in that group of people that they expressed so openly now it's not a public thing we don't do this and it's not an open thing we it's by invitation and so I think people feel safe because of that but the vulnerability that people expressed and therefore the support that and encouragement that they, they got from each other so their vulnerability and the courageousness go hand in hand they're really important to sit together yeah. um but I, I don't know what else you would say Kate about about that I think that because it just came from a spark of an idea that we kind of went should we do that yeah when should we do it next Thursday right okay we didn't have too long to talk ourselves out of it to say will it be successful will we be you know will we look okay we just did it and I think because of that because we didn't overthink it we didn't make it complicated or complex it was really natural 
it flowed and just kind of almost developed a life of its own. So I think we started with seven people, maybe. So me, you and Matt, our speaker, <laughs> Lynn, and a few more people. And then the next week, there were a few more. And it just kind of, it really developed beautifully. And, and so the, the relationships that you were talking about, Bev, and that ability to be vulnerable publicly-ish in a safe space felt really natural because people almost kind of grew into it with each other. And as new people came in, they got accepted in and then they kind of stayed and stuck with it. So it's become more and more of a thing as it as it's continued, which has been really lovely to see because it did just literally come from a spark of an idea. It didn't have a massive plan behind it. It just kind of morphed into something that we learned about and and continued with. And it's it's kind of grown steadily into something that I know for a fact people really really have valued um I know that someone who's been involved with it said it really helped her with her mental kind of state over the last kind of wee while because she's found it tough and it, she went to it it was like a little sanctuary and and people talked about it like an oasis of calm didn't they Bev? I think that was one of the descriptions that we had so yeah it's been really lovely to almost selfishly provide it for ourselves and buy a really happy byproduct to provide something really val- valuable for other people as well yeah, hundred percent. It provided value. Um, so you can add me to the list as well because it provided value for me. It became like a, a weekly excitement, you know. Like, oh, I think it was Thursdays, wasn't it? Oh, Thursday. Oh, great. I know I've got to be ready for for spring break. But it it did. It became like therapy because it was a space that was safe. It was private. I was with peers who I, um, you know, would consider inspirational, and it was a chance to listen. You know, I remember going into some sessions having no idea who the speaker was and what they would do. But 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 by the end of it, you'd walk away with going, wow, I had no idea that that completely random job would have any impact in my life. And it did. Mm. And I loved that idea of just just listening, you know, and I think I think probably just me being an ignorant human being, you know, years and years ago, being stuck into this, you know, the old dopamine fix that there is so much wonder outside of that. And that's what that did for me. It gave me value. And I mentioned it, I've seen one of the earlier podcast episodes, but in May, I think it was about May, yeah, last year, I had a bit of a, what I call a, a bit of a breakdown where I just thought for so long, I'd, I'd been put on this pedestal. You know, uh, you look at social media and I was on this pedestal of Ricky, you're always performing, you're always smiling, you're always happy, you're always so busy. Oh, you look like you have a wonderful life. But inside I was, I was really bad, you know, because I had no business, no more wedding, no stag do, as I said, but it's probably the most important thing that year. Um, no, of course, Daniel, I love you. But so many bad things had happened to me, but people's perception of me was that, you must be fine, Ricky, there can't be anything wrong with you, but actually I'm a human being. I'm not just this performer. And I had to separate that difference of performer Ricky and human being Ricky. And the breathing space and uh, spring break did that for me because I got to go in and be a human being interestingly i will say because the um we'll put some links for this in the show notes so if anybody wants to watch uh, any because they're all recorded aren't they on the youtube page um i went back in december and looked at my chat not because i'm narcissistic but interestingly i went on to see who was watching and at the time i think i only knew you matt and obviously kate i look back now and i think tony adenell was on there wendy asman was on there kirsty mack um anthony devlin um yeah. photographer and then I think, wow, oh my God, you know, like I now think of where I am now and reflecting back at all those people I had no idea. I would have loved to have just gone back in time and say, Ricky, look at these people and remember these faces because these are going to be, you know, um, these are going to be great people for you this year. You know, who would have known, like I said, you know, to get a text or a WhatsApp message from a smiley face from Kirsty Mack or Scott Leeper, you know, as you know, we send voice memos to, to I send voice memos to you two. Uh, I send them to all sorts of different people now. And what a wonderful thing that blossomed because you created that experience. So yeah, my, my gratefulness goes out to you two for doing that. So thank you. I think it was a wonderful thing. And I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are of what can we do this year to create an experience for our customers or even in our business this year. I am massively into customer experience. I've got a text. I'll read this out to you today, actually. Uh, it's from my accountant, actually, <laughs> which is really cool. So Toby, if you're listening, hello please save me some money and toby was um he he went to an online show of mine recently and um, as you know i do something without ruining the surprise but at the end of the show i send bits from the show and and something special just to to tell you as a bit of a thankfulness 
And he messaged me and said, hi, Ricky, thanks for the, the package I've just received. Very thoughtful. I'm guessing one of the things you used to training was customer care, smiley face. And for me, that was a really important thing. And I, I truly think that we all need to do more for our customers this year, but to create an experience. The whole thing about showing up and being there, I think through 2020 and 2021, people, I say it a lot, I, that's a terrible phrase. I should put a pound every time I say this, the Maya Angelou phrase, you know, people won't remember what you said. They won't remember what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. I think that we should all be doing that more, creating experiences that people actually remember how you made them feel through such a turmoil in their life. You know, you did that for me uh, by spring break, by having a conversation. And Bev, as I said to you before, even back in our um, conversations that we had, the coaching conversations, you hardly said anything to me. You just said, what more do you want to think and feel? But I, it gave me that chance to open up. And you certainly made me feel very, very special. That probably turned around the back half of last year. So my question, let's go to Bev first, is what experience do you think that we can create for our customers in 2021? So I think that the most important thing that we can do for our customers is give them our attention. And I, and I mean that in a in the kind of way that you experienced it, Ricky, where you got my full attention for the time that we spent together in our coaching conversations. Because I think attention's in short supply because of that lack of ease and the speed that everyone's going at. And I think that when we make people feel as though they're the most important person in the room, they do their best thinking. And so actually by accident, they have a great customer experience, but it was down to them. It was down to their thinking, but it, it's that the fact that you, you create that little bubble of attention is a thing that makes the biggest difference. And that's not trying to be, um, we don't need to be gimmicky or clever or try and anticipate what they might need. Cause I think what people sometimes do with customer experience is they think, well, I need to anticipate it, what they want and therefore surprise them with something that will change their lives well you know what attention changes people people's lives it, it changes how they think about themselves and what they see and what they notice and and so I think that is actually although it's really simple and people might think that that's a very simplistic answer I think there's a lot of complexity that lies in giving people the kind of quality attention that transforms their thinking and makes them feel like the human beings that they want to be so I think that's at the heart of customer experiences. And I love the fact you're using the word experiences because Kate and I have talked about this actually today. We don't like the word workshop. So we design and facilitate workshops, except we've realised we don't. We create experiences for people. And, and that's one of the things we learned from last year is, is the importance of that experience. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> I was just going to add to that yeah sorry, sorry Kate God. before you uh, reply great answer Bev uh, yeah not once did I say Bev and Kate set up a Zoom <laughs> Bev and Kate set up a weekly Zoom where I could chat no Bev and Kate created this wonderful experience that you could come and be yourself and speak your mind so yeah I love that thank you Bev great answer Kate what about you what would be your answer to how can we create a great customer experience in 2021 I think that the word caring is really kind of coming to my mind. So you talked before about customer care, but I think in its simplest form, really caring about the customers that we have. So I think that we've touched on it already in this conversation, but really remembering that we are all human beings and caring not just about doing a great job and serving their needs um, from a kind of business point of view, but being really caring about them as human beings. So having having those human conversations with people about what is going on in their lives, knowing full well that there'll be something, particularly given the experience of last year and as it kind of flows into 2021. Um, I've, I've just been speaking earlier to a, to a customer and, um, you know, I've had a working relationship with her probably for the last eight months, probably. And a lot of the conversation we had was about her family situation, not just about the work that we're doing together so I think that really genuinely caring about the, the human being that's in front of you or you're working with or that you have worked with is is hugely important and it's and always I think with that, that kind of caring thing it can be really obvious and it can be really little kind of very subtle things as well yeah. so I mean I've just literally opened a package from Bev in the post 
And one of the things that she put in there is a nice little postcard that says the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Um, and there's a really nice appreciation note on the back. And Brilliant. I get loads of appreciation from Bev and hopefully she gets loads of appreciation from me as well. But yeah. I think that's another way that we can really show that we care by appreciating the stuff that people do for us. In fact, I've just been tidying up my office and I've got a whole pile of stuff that people have sent me over last year that is appreciated appreciative it's a you know their cards or their little drawings that people have done for me or you know whatever loads of different kind of things but all with a very appreciative message which ultimately makes me feel like I'm cared for so I think some of that will be really helpful it's a really great answer from so thank you for both of you because my next question was going to be how do we make our business more human we have kind of answered it in that and I, I'm not going to repeat because I talked about it in the last episode but uh, I shared a story about why I gave a Yorkie bar to somebody in Morrison's and I think that sometimes like you say Bev we often associate customer experience you know do we have to do we have to spend something do we have to buy something I know that I do something where I um, it's only a, a little purchase to make someone feel special but even things like giving a Yorkie bar to someone and just telling him, you're awesome, mate. Look, thank you for just being a great uh, guy. It was, it's just a, a checkout guy. But to me, it was more than that because of the experience that he gave me. He needed to be told. So I wanted to tell him how awesome he was. Here's a chocolate bar. And I think I just wish more people would do that. And I think maybe we, we should start a ripple. There we go. We should start a ripple of kindness. Um, I do do it sometimes. I think I've sent it to Bev and probably Kate, a couple of others as well, if you're listening, where I send a little voice memo. Uh, Alan and Emily from the Yellow Tuxedo, who will be on uh, the podcast this year, they started it out with me last year. And I think that is so powerful when you can get a little voice memo and you can hear someone's voice talking to you. Hello, Ricky. It's Bev. How are you? That is so special. And it costs nothing, but it creates a wonderful experience, like you said, of kindness, uh, gratitude, you know, just going out. I think everyone, if you listen to this episode, go out there today at the end of this episode, go on Instagram, go on WhatsApp, send a voice memo, just tell someone how awesome they are and just make them feel special, um, which I think is the absolute answer of making uh, a great experience, isn't it? Being a human being. Mm. I think that's the answer to 2021. Mm. One of the things that um, I forgot to say at the start of the episode, which I wanted to bring in, was this wonderful journal, the Journal for Clear Thinking, the Corona Edit which is a truly, truly special journal. I know a lot of people listen to this podcast will own one of these copies as well. So um, Bev, Kate, would you explain what is a journal for clear thinking? Do you want to go first, Kate? I will, I will. So I've got mine here as well. I should wait mine too, Ricky. It's a little bit well funded. It's <laughs> well used. Um, so Bev and I have had cards for clear thinking for a long time and they are behaviors that are they're cards that we use in our business loads to get people thinking about how they want it to be we've talked about being versus doing quite a lot on this um, podcast already and I think as lockdown kind of continued and became the norm at, at the kind of start ish of, ne- of last year we started having conversations with people that said something like wow I've been noticing all these really brilliant things about people's behavior during lockdown I really hope we don't lose sight of that when life goes back to normal. And I guess that sparked a thought with us in terms of what had been the behaviours or what were the behaviours that were really coming to the surface. And um, as part of our play group, so we had a play group um, for our cards and as part of the play group, we created um, an edition of cards that were the Corona edition. And they all ended up beginning with a C. So they were C words. So Kirsty was doing a podcast at the time about the C word, which were all Corona words that um, had kind of sprung to her mind and we kind of tied that together so our journal for clear thinking has 13 cards all beginning with c so things like caring conversational creative connected courageous challenging a whole bunch of things that really started to kind of typify um, the experience that we'd had in lockdown and then with our cards they have a, a colored side as you know Ricky, and they have a, a, a dark side as well so we wanted to allow people to think about those real positives but also think about the kind of dark side to those behaviors as well they ended up nice and neatly in our journal for clear thinking so some time to allow people to really delve into their innermost thoughts and to get them on paper so they didn't lose them but what else would you add there so um we took it a stage further and we turned it into a conversation so back in november when the journal was published we then hosted c is for conversation so you're talking you, you were saying earlier one of the questions was was going to be about how to make our businesses more human mm. that was the day then i when i was very human 
in our business. So we hosted this conversation and people came along and I think we had about 18 people there and we gave people a chance to, with their journal and the C words, to think about the kind of conversations that they'd had over the year and, and which, which words resonated for them and which were the most impactful conversations that that people had and there was so much vulnerability and humanity and kindness and care that people that strangers actually because they weren't people that knew each other but people came together and went into the zoom outbreak rooms and in that outbreak rooms where outbreaks of thinking happened they shared really deep thinking about the the conversations that they'd had and it revealed things to them that they hadn't been thinking about. So there's there's kind of a health warning with this because people <laughs> people did get quite emotional, which then meant I got very emotional at the end of the series for conversation and had to dry my eyes. It's famous. I had to dry my eyes with a clean trainer sock because I couldn't find any tissues. <laughs> but but I my initial thought is, oh, I, sh- I shouldn't be like this. This is a professional. You know, we had clients on the call. You know, this is a professional environment. I need to pull myself together. But actually, what made the biggest difference was the fact that I was so vulnerable on the call and people really warmed to that. And I warmed to that in other people. So why would I assume that that wouldn't be an appropriate thing to do? But I think I think showing showing what matters to us in situations like that I think that's the thing that brings humanity into our businesses that shows it's not all about money. It's not all about growth, sales funnels, marketing machines. It's actually just that human stuff. So so that that's how the journal came to life. And actually, we're going to host another couple of C's for conversation um, sessions because there's still plenty of opportunity to to reflect on what happened in. 2020 because corona is still with us so the behaviors that we want to demonstrate as as nice human beings are still very relevant so we're creating a couple more opportunities for people to reflect one in january but then one um one towards the the end of february that people are welcome to take part in fantastic and and i've got to say that i absolutely love this i bought it i think i was probably one of the first to receive it because the link went out uh, or to receive the physical copy. I think I was like the fourth or fifth person that bought it, but I received it like literally the day after. Uh, and I've been journaling now for about for about four or five months now. I never used to do it, um, but it's ingrained now into one of my habits and my systems now that when I wake up, I will write down three things that um, I'm very grateful for. So uh, again, as I laughed with Andy Cope, it's about waking up with no toothache, you know, um, three affirmations and three things that will make today great. And then at the end of the day, I also write three things that, that was really great about the day and three things that could have gone better. So this kind of really came in at the right time, really, for me, because I think it's so, so important to have uh, increased self-awareness about yourself and just reflect about the day. Uh, and for anyone out there, if you've never tried it, please go try it. But this is a fantastic journal. If people want to get a copy of this, how can they get a copy? Well, it's very easy because if you do visit amazon.co.uk and you type in Journal for Clear Thinking, it will appear in Ooh. in in the search at the top oh, fantastic. because there's nothing else called that. That's good um, SEO, <laughs> it, it's it was accidental brilliance, right. um, <laughs> and it just, yeah, it just happened. But but if if people go there, then they can get their copy within a couple of days. Brilliant. We'll pop that link in the show notes as well. So if anybody listening, head to that little link and you can get yourself a copy. It is really really great. And and as I said, these two ladies are absolutely wonderful people. The the success for me for last year would not have come out from, uh, I, I don't think, uh, well, who knows, but I think a lot of the success was largely responsible to both Kate and Bev. So anything they buy, I think I'm now hooked. Uh, sorry, anything they build or create, I am hooked. So highly recommend everyone to go check that out. Okay. Uh, but thank you for that. Brilliant. So I guess then as we start to wrap it up, uh, my question would be for you, what opportunities are coming up? What Have we got some exciting stuff coming up for the Clear Thinking Partnership? What's coming up soon? Have you got anything exciting coming up? No, because I'm swimming against the fish. Oh, and so <laughs> um, and we have we have got exciting yeah. things. I, I think what we learned uh, because we were able to use um, our time effectively last year and involve lots of people, collaborate with loads of people. We created some things that we're going to continue to work with. So the cards continue to have another uh, rejuvenation. So nearly all the images are our own. So our cards for clear thinking are still available for people to to, um, 
to use. We're going to start a card school early on in this year to, to give people a chance to come together and go, how are you using the cards? What, what do you do with them? And what, what are some of the games and ideas? Because Playgroup allowed us to create a lot of things with the collaborators that we work with then. So we've got lots of people to share and come together and do that. And then also we mentioned Playgroup. It's morphed slightly into Playcation. Wish you were here. So Playcation will launch again this year. So that's two things. What else? What else is there? So, well, I think that our plan also is to create another journal for clear thinking. Mm -hmm. So the Corona edit obviously is still very relevant, um, given that lockdown happened last night. We want to continue to kind of build on that example of, you know, encouraging people to reflect and reflectively journal their thoughts. Um, I, I, I always like to think of it, it's like creating your own little bit of history, isn't it? Because we go through things and we think, I'll never forget this. This will be front and centre of my mind forever. And then life happens to us and it all kind of starts to kind of dissipate. So I love the thought of having a journal that is your bit of history that is being created. And um, so I think that there's probably another journal on the cards um, as we move into that springtime, that time of kind of um, reinvigorating, rejuvenating, things growing and, and becoming something different and special. And um, so there might be a bit of that. We've got a new website as well, haven't we Bev? That's um, launching very soon. So that's that's been really a very interesting experience to do because I think our website of old was pretty old and we didn't really look at it at all um and now our website very much reflects what it is that we do what we stand for what we what we think about in in terms of experiences and helping people think really well so that's exciting too and then there's something about creating an online community space which is part of the reinvention of our website to allow us to have an online platform as well so obviously as usual Ricky plans to um do a whole load of different things which are very exciting as always fantastic i look forward to seeing that and um before we go into final thoughts and uh, i'm going to ask you about your three behavior cards for this year um if people want to find out more about you how is the easiest way to find you um so clearthinkinguk.com is where we hang out on the internet but if you visit today you might want to visit again in a week because the website might have launched by then. And, <laughs> and so you'll have the old version and the new version to compare and contrast. Um, and people can find us on LinkedIn. We hang out on LinkedIn and, and uh, mainly there, but other social media as well. But you can find us and connect to us on LinkedIn, but also on our website. Brilliant. Well, uh, I guess as we wrap this up then, my uh, on question, I'm going to ask you two more questions. So the last question or first question is final thoughts for 2021. Bev. Oh, so go slow, go into it slowly, really take some time to think about what you want to take from last year into this year. Don't throw it away too quickly and, and you'll bounce, bounce into 2021 because as grim <laughs> as the news would have us believe things are at the moment, we'll be okay. It may sound a little bit trite to say that, but you know, we will be okay. So I think, yeah take take that in take what you what you need from last year into this thank you Beth and Kate again for fear of sounding a little trite life is an experience it's a journey not a destination enjoy the journey um so you know if you're on a train you'd be sitting looking out the window watching the you know the clouds roll by and the the trees and the hills but really to enjoy the moments that we have because I think that I'm absolutely positive that 2021 will be full of amazing experiences if we let ourselves give ourselves the opportunity to stop and notice them. I love that. I think I'm going to add one here now because you two have both inspired me as you always do. And I think to the old sausage machine, I think Bev, you've mentioned this before, but life is what you put into it, isn't it? You know, and I think this year I'm going to really think about what do I want to put, um, what ingredients do I want to put into my sausage machine? <laughs> so that's for me, <laughs> definitely. Love that. Thank you so much. So I guess then the last thing is then what three behavior cards are going to be your cards for 2021, Bev? So I have chosen three and those cards are consistent. So because I love variety, consistency it, it eludes me. And so I think there is magic in daily habits. And so I'm going to try and be more consistent in a number of areas. But because consistency could also possibly be a little bit dull, I'm going with playful consistency. So it's kind of like spontaneous consistency. <laughs> <laughs> which which is a bit ironic which is why I went for playful but 
but I think I can be playfully consistent. But also my third card is to be thoughtful. And that's that's not that's thoughtful as in thinking deeply enough about things, but also thinking about others. So playful, consistent, and thoughtful are my three words for this year. Love that. Thank you, Bev. And Kate, what are yours? So I have chosen bold. It's on my January calendar. Um, so yeah, being bold, having a go at all sorts of different things, maybe sometimes the things that terrify me. Being hopeful. Right. Absolutely. Always live in a very hopeful way. And actually reflecting what Bev's just said, playful was my third one. So yeah, really just allowing us to experiment with things to have a play to, to see where life takes us because I think often we're put off by things because we wonder how they're going to turn out so we don't do them just in case they don't turn out well but if you I think if you attack things in a playful way um it doesn't matter it's like an experiment um and you have some fun along the way too so they would be my three playful hopeful and bold love that Bev Kate thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure as I said I think that I would not have had the success uh, I would have had last year without you two being in my life. So thank you so much. I'm truly grateful for you too. I think you are two wonderful human beings and more people need to know about you. Um, wishing you all the success and best wishes for 2021. I hope you have a fantastic 2021. And I hope to see you at some session or conversation or voice memo <laughs> sending to you uh, this year. But thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck for 2021. Oh, Ricky, thank you so much for having us. Your success this year is in no small part down to you. <laughs> so whilst whilst we appreciate the appreciation, it takes nothing away from the fact that you have just been a stellar performer this year in everything you've done. You've done some incredible things. So thank you for letting us be part of your journey all the way through the year and for showing up and being part of ours as well. So we really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. You two are very kind. Thank you so much, Bev and Kate, for taking the time out and talking to me and kicking off season two. I really enjoyed our conversation and I appreciate you coming on to the show. For everybody listening, if you want to find out more about Bev and Kate, head to the show notes and you can find some links about the Clear Thinking Partnership and how to purchase one of the Clear Thinking Journals. But don't forget, you do have a great chance of winning one of the Clear Thinking Journals and my Unlock Podcast Notebook and Tasty Treats and Tipples Hamper by joining in my competition. To be in with a chance to win this wonderful prize, head to Instagram, follow my page at Ricky Lock Magic, like the competition post, tag two of your friends who would also love this hamper and screenshot yourself listening to this episode and stick it onto your stories. The more you comment and the more you tag, the more chances you have at winning the prize. The competition ends on Tuesday the 2nd of February 2021 and I will reveal the winner on Wednesday the 3rd of February. As always, thank you for your continued support and thank you for listening to this episode. If you like this episode, then head over to Apple Podcasts and give it a little review. That would really help out. Once again, thank you and I can't wait to join you on the next episode of Unlocked. Unlocked.